I welcome all of you to the class. As far as the today's class is concerned, today we'll be talking about the two-dimensional state of stress. Today we'll be talking about the two-dimensional state of stress. The first and foremost question is why we want to take up the two dimensional state of stress. And the second important thing is understanding the concept of the three dim two dimensional state of stress. As far as the previous question in the previous class, we were talking about the unidirectional state of stress. We had a machine element, which was essentially in the form of a bar. Okay. And this bar was subjected to some load, say for example, P. Now this bar will have some area of cross section, fine. Take a small section out from here. Let's take a very small element out of this machine element, okay, which is mainly in the form of a cuboid. And start doing the analysis on this cuboid. As we take up a small element out of this cuboid and you will see that as far as this face of the cuboid is concerned, it is being subject to load P, okay. Now, under the influence of this load P, what happens to the length of the machine element? The length of the machine element will increase. That is the machine element will undergo extension. The length of the machine element will increase. That is the machine element will undergo extension. That is the first and foremost thing the machine element will undergo. And we talked in the previous class that under the influence of this external deforming load P, the stress created in the machine element will be along the same axis as the application of the load, okay? And we call that as a normal stress that's equal P by A, fine. But there is one more thing that as the length of the machine element will increase, the area of the cross-section, the area of cross-section of the machine element will reduce. This is something very important. That is, if you happen to extend a machine element, okay, if the length of the machine element increases, but the area of cross-section of the machine element will decrease fine, the area will tend to decrease. So if we have a machine element whose area of cross section is say, for example, uh, is say, for example, uh, let's suppose uh, one mm square, okay. Now this machine element is subjected to a unidirectional load. The load is acting along the single axis, only one axis, okay. So the area of cross section will happen to decrease. Now under the influence of this load P, the area of cross section will not be one mm square, but it will be it will be less than one mm square. Okay. Now it means that as the area is decreasing, if you look here, if you take an element out of this machine element before the application of the load, then say for example, this this dimension was equal to L1 or delta L1, and this dimension was equal to delta L2. Okay, before the application of the load. Okay, now when you subject the machine element to load P, what will happen? Delta L1 will increase. Okay, but delta L2 will decrease. So it means the load that is acting on the machine element is a single load. We are having load only along a single axis. So this we call as this. You say that this is a this is a unidirectional load. The load is the unidirectional load. Okay, the load to which the machine element is subjected to is the unidirectional load. But you look at the change in lengths. The change in length happens along this axis, okay, as well as this axis. Or maybe the change in length will also take place along the third axis. That's its thickness will also decrease. Okay, so it means under the influence of, if we talk only about the two dimensions and we neglect the third dimension, let's suppose the thickness of this machine element is very, very small, okay. That is, the machine element happens to be of very small th thickness, like this. Let's neglect its one dimension for some time, okay? Let's suppose this length is delta L1. And this dimension is, is uh, delta L2. And this dimension is very small, okay? Let's not count this dimension at all, okay? That is thickness is negligible. You assume that thickness of machine element is negligible. Thickness is negligible, okay? 
So under the influence of the load that we are applying along single axis, that is a unidirectional case, what happens? The delta L2 as well as delta L1 will change. Okay. So we write delta L1, okay, was the initial length. Now, after the application of the load P, the length will change. So this machine element will undergo extension, fine, in this direction. In this direction, the machine element will certainly undergo extension, okay. So this will undergo some sort of extension. Okay, so let's call this as delta one. Okay, now what will happen along delta L2 direction? Along delta L2 direction, the machine element will undergo compression. Okay, the, 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 the area, the length delta L2 will decrease as this dimension is increasing, this dimension will decrease. So what happens the, under the influence of this load, this dimension will decrease. Let's suppose the change in length that happens is say, for example, delta two, okay? So we treat this to be our x-axis and we treat this to be our y-axis, okay? Therefore, we can write, we can call this as strain along x-axis, okay? We can write this as that's equal uh, change in length, that is delta one divided by original length, that is delta L one, okay? This is strain along x-axis. This strain along x-axis is also known as the longitudinal strain. This is also known as the longitudinal uh, strain, okay? Similarly, what will be the strain along y-axis? The strain along y-axis happens to be change in length, that is delta two, divided by original length, that's delta L two. And this change in length along y-direction is called uh, transverse strain or lateral strain. This we call as transverse Okay, transverse or the lateral strain. Call this the transverse of the lateral strain. Okay, now look at the problem again. The, the loading is only along the one direction. We have a load only along x axis. But the effect of this load is also along other axes. And here we are neglecting one dimension. We're neglecting the thickness of the machine element, okay? So under the influence of the load acting along one direction, we're having the strains along X and Y direction, longitudinal strains and the lateral strains, okay? So uh, as far as, uh, yeah, we have something, uh, okay. Uh, what we call as uh, a very important uh, property of the material, which I should say, what we call as the Poisson's ratio, okay? The Poisson's ratio I should write here. We define a quantity that's called Poisson's ratio. Okay, and we define it by the symbol nu. Okay, this is Poisson's ratio. It's defined as negative of this lateral strain or the transfer strain, okay? It's defined as net lateral strain divided by the longitudinal strain. It's defined as a ratio of negative of the lateral strain by the longitudinal strain. So as far as the Poisson's ratio is concerned, there's a very important property associated with the materials, which we'll be discussing in detail in this current topic, in this current uh, you know chapter. It's defined as a neg negative of the lateral strain by the longitudinal strain. Okay, so if we know the laterals, if we know the longitudinal strain, which we usually know by the Hooke's law, okay, so we can calculate the value of the lateral strain. Something that's very important, which uh, we should emphasize upon here, is uh, the concept that uh, you should not get carried away by saying that using the using the Hooke's law, you say strain acting along a particular direction is equal. Uh, stress acting along that direction divides, divided by the Young's modulus of elasticity. And we define stress as low divided by area. So you see that strain is equal to P by AE. So along X axis, you do have what you call as the P. So you will be having some value of strain, but look along Y axis, along Y axis, we do not have any value of load. We, no load is acting along Y axis. So the value of the strain, so the value of the P along Y axis is zero. As the value of the P along Y axis is zero, it means the value of the strain along Y axis should be equal to zero. And that's quite correct, okay? Because this strain 
that we are calculating is due to the influence of the load is due to the load p acting okay and we know the strain is p by a that's quite correct now if we have to calculate the strain along acting along y direction that's quite different that is the strain acting along y direction is due to the fact that there is no stress acting along y direction but still we are having strain along y direction it is because that it's because of the influence of this load p okay so every time you calculate the strain acting on the machine element you should be very careful about this uh, poisson's effect or the poisson's ratio okay with this concept in mind uh, we should return back to the two dimensional state of stress now uh, when i was talking about the two dimensional state of stress we do have machine elements which are subjected to a two dimensional state of stress okay that is uh, in the previous case we were talking about a machine element like this we were taking a cuboidal element okay and uh, we could assume that this machine element is loaded in this direction that is p fine and you see that the load or even if you calculate the reaction of this machine element that was along p prime and you see the entire loading is acting along only one direction okay so you are having only one axis along which the entire loading system is happening okay and along which the loading is done but we do have machine elements okay where we have two types of loads okay so if we uh, how uh, if first let me draw its skeleton it's drawn like this in two dimensional view or in the front view so we say the load p and p this is a one dimensional case when a when a machine when a when a machine element happens to be in this form okay you have loads acting only along one direction we call that as a unidirectional case but we do have machine elements which are subjected to it which are under the influence of a two dimensional state of stress okay so you have loads acting along x axis so let me call that as p1 and you do have some loads acting along y axis let me call that as p2 okay so we and if you look at these loads as i was talking in the last uh, in the last class these loads are the normal loads okay these are the normal loads both these loads are the normal loads so this is a normal load acting in this direction and this is the normal load acting in this direction okay so we do have this two dimensional state of stress okay so when you have machine elements which are subjected to two dimensional state of stress how do you calculate the stresses in them okay how do you calculate the maximum normal stresses the minimum normal stresses the maximum shear stresses in them how do the machine elements later on fail under the influence of these loads that's what we do usually in the two dimensional state of stress so so, so the answer is like that we do have machine elements which are subjected to the uh, two dimensional two dimensional state of stress okay now uh, let me give you an example as we have to do uh, from the application point of view you talk about the pressure vessels okay the pressure vessels as far as the pressure vessels are concerned they are the vessels made of they are made of metal made of metal okay like cast iron or aluminium okay uh, and are used to store a uh, pressurized fluid okay they are used to store pressurized fluid okay so what do we mean by the pressurized fluid okay for example i will talk of the gas cylinder at home let me talk about the lpg the domestic uh, gas cylinder okay so we do have the domestic gas cylinder okay as far as the domestic gas cylinder is concerned this domestic gas cylinder is filled internally with the 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 pressurized gas it's filled internally with the pressurized gas okay so if you look at what the pressurized gas tends to do on the machine on this entire cylinder okay what is the influence the influence is like let me draw this properly over here let me draw its academic diagram let's suppose this is the cylindrical pr pressure vessel this is say for example the cylindrical pressure vessel okay fine and the material will have some thickness okay the material will have some thickness now what the pressurized gas will be exerting force in this direction as well as in this direction in this direction okay in all the directions it can fine 
So the pressurized gas will first of all try to increase the length. It will try to increase the length of the of the cylinder. Increase the length. The problem is as same as you take up a balloon. You take up a balloon. Okay, let's talk about a balloon. Fine. So when you inhale air into the balloon, inhale air into the balloon. What happens to the balloon? The size of the balloon increases. Okay, so its diameter is increasing. At the same time, its length is increasing. Okay, so this is what the pressurized air is tending to do on a balloon. It tends to increase its length at the same time, tends to increase its diameter. Okay, same is happening here. The pressurized fluid is doing what? The pressurized fluid is tending to increase the length of this cylinder. So there will be there will be the load, the deforming force will tend to move this machine element in this direction. This is one. Okay. Number two is uh, this pressurized fluid also tends to increase the diameter of this element. Okay, so what does the diameter in enhancement, uh, say for example, you take an element over here. So this element is also subjected to a load externally. Okay, because if, if the tendency of this internal fluid is to increase the diameter, that's only possible when this pressurized fluid will tend to move this element of the machine element in the upward outward direction. Okay, so if I take this element out, so on this element, we are having load in this direction. Okay, the pressurized fluid is trying to increase its length. At the same time, we are having load in this direction. It's tending to increase its diameter as well. That's possible when the element will be will be it will tend to move the element in down up in the outward direction. Okay, uh, in the same way. Uh, if you look, this element will also be connected with some other elements, okay? Because this is not an isolated element. So you have elements which are connected with each other, fine? So as this element is being, if you tend to move this element out, this element will try to resist, fine? Now, in at the, at, at the, at the interface between these two elements, there will be the force, what you call as a shear force, okay? Here, there will be the shear force, which will uh, essentially try to overcome the influence of the internal pressure in increasing the diameter of the machine element, okay? So on this face, we also show some shear force by the diagram, by the symbol, by the symbol, tau, okay? We also tend to show the shear forces acting on the four faces of this element and we represent them by tau, okay? So when we talk about the two-dimensional state of stress, as is an example here, as we have to do in the coming chapters, we'll be talking about the spherical pressure vessels, the cylindrical pressure vessels, we'll be talking about the beams, okay? So uh, the shear force in the beams, okay? Or the shear stresses, sorry, in the beams. And many other examples where the machine element is under the influence of a two-dimensional state of stress, okay? That's quite complicated story for us, okay? So in the two-dimensional state of stress, as far as the stress element is now concerned, what will we be talking about the stress element? As far as this stress element is concerned, the stress element is like this. We have an element, we isolate it. So it is subjected to stress, normal stress along x-axis. We write this as sigma x. It's subjected to normal stress along y-axis. We call this as sigma y. It is subjected to shear stresses. We call them as tau. Call them as tau, okay? Tau and tau, fine. We call them a shear stresses. And be careful about that all the shear stresses have equal magnitude. Shear stresses are equal in magnitude. Why? We'll discuss that later on. First of all, understand how this two-dimensional state of stress looks like, how the two an element in two-dimensional state of stress looks like, okay? So the, now the question is very important for us. Uh, let me uh, talk about your book, a few examples from your book, uh, wherein the two-dimensional state of stress is a bit uh, highlighted. Um, just a I was talking about your book. Okay. Yeah. Mm 
is as is given here two dimensional state of stress but the question is why do we have oh okay here an example is given here this is quite important which i would like to share with you uh, look into your book okay it's talking about the fuselage of an aircraft this is very very important it talks about the fuselage of an aircraft okay uh, let me yeah yes it talks about the fuselage of an aircraft okay so what do we have in this fuselage if you look here an element has been isolated as i was talking about okay so as far as this element that has been isolated is concerned this element is a part of the aircraft fuselage and if you look at an aircraft which is essentially an uh, if you look at an aircraft the aircraft is simply a cylindrical pressure vessel okay it is a cylindrical pressure vessel it's like this it's a cylindrical pressure vessel okay so inside there you have the high pressure air high pressure air why we have a high pressure air here why i'm talking about high pressure air i'm talking about high pressure air because the aircraft usually works at around 32000 feet okay 32000 feet at 32000 feet there uh, the, the, the pressure of atmosphere is very very small in fact you can consider that you don't have an atmospheric pressure outside do you have a very thin layer of air okay you have a very thin layer of air at 32000 feet the aircraft is still in the atmosphere because it requires oxygen for the combustion otherwise the combustion will not be possible okay but at 32000 the pressure of the air outside is very very small and nobody can survive uh, at 32000 feet because at 32000 feet the concentration of oxygen in the air is very small the pressure of the air is very small for the lungs to breathe properly okay so what's to be done when you have passengers in an aircraft you usually supply you, ha you have to make it sure that inside the cabin the pressure of the fluid is same as the atmospheric pressure okay so that the people passengers can breathe properly but you look outside so inside the aircraft your pressure is uh, atmospheric pressure but do you have atmospheric pressure outside no you are having pressure less very much less than the atmospheric pressure so that's why i was talking i was saying the high pressure high pressure i'm i'm just giving a comparison term with respect to the environment outside it's high okay otherwise it's simply equal to what it's equal to the atmospheric pressure so in the cylindrical pressure vessel what will this internal pressure tend to do okay in the fuselage what will the internal pressure tend to do okay as far as the internal pressure will tend to do it will tend to increase the length of the fuselage as i was talking about so you will have stresses okay sometimes compressive sometimes tensile we'll discuss that okay so it will also tend to increase the it will there will it will also tend to increase the diameter of the machine element okay that's possible when we will be having stresses in this direction as well as is given here okay so you are having stresses okay at the same time this machine element is in contact with other element so in between the elements in between this element and this element in there will be what there will be what we call as as this machine element will try to move out this machine element will resist so in between them there will also be some sort of shear stress okay so we say in the two dimensional state of stress as is given here in the two dimensional state of stress a machine element is represented like this you have a normal stress you have a normal stress and you do have the shear stresses acting on the element okay few more examples from here where we find this two dimensional state of stress in fact we'll be just now calling this state of stress as a plane stress condition which is very important as uh, as given in most of the questions so let me see where we can also find this type of condition uh, okay stress elements which we will be discussing and dealing now are very important okay this experiment will be doing uh, in our lab and this talks about the bending of the beams okay uh, we have to do this experiment we will be doing it in in our lab and it talks about the crack propagation at different angles okay 
okay let me uh, take you along the book how the machine elements behave it's an example of a pure torsion okay where you have torsional shear stresses only yeah Okay, many an examples you can take up from the book. Anyways, uh, let me return back to my whiteboard and start. So I was talking about this stress condition where you will be having the stresses acting along the two directions. Now let me very quickly end up with what we call as the sign conventions. What are sign conventions? Sign conventions are if you take an element, stress element okay okay as i was talking in the previous class the area is now a vector for us it is a vector okay so if you talk about if you consider this to be your x axis okay or uh, let me consider this to be my x-axis let's consider this to be our y-axis and let's consider this to be our z-axis okay this is where all the three x's are meeting let me call this as origin let's suppose this this dimension is very very small that is the z almost almost approach to zero this is a very thin plate okay so as far as this this plane is concerned this plane is your x plane okay because as you draw the area this is the magnitude of the area will be equal to the magnitude of this area and it its vector will be a unit vector along x axis so this becomes an area vector along x axis this becomes an x area or an x face similarly this face is your y face or the y area fine now uh, if you have stress acting if you have sigma say for example stress acting along x axis in the same direction and you have stress acting along y direction here in the same direction as the direction of the area vector then you take sigma x and sigma y as positive so we take sigma x and sigma y as positive only when sigma x and sigma y has the same direction as the direction of the area vector if the directions are opposite if your area vector in this direction and your stress is in this direction then you take them as negative this is one thing second is about the the shear stress uh, sign convention how do you what how do you take this how do you talk about the sign conventions of these shear stresses that's important now if you look at the sign convention of the shear stress so on this face i am saying the shear stress is tau if this tau happens to be in this direction okay tau and this tau is say for example in this direction here tau is in this direction and here tau is say for example in this direction okay now see you have to see the effect in order to give the direction to the tau you have to see the effect of tau okay you have to see the effect of tau effect of tau means what is this tau trying to do if you look the sense of rotation of this tau is anti clockwise its sense of rotation is anti clockwise by saying that its sense of rotation is anti clockwise means that it's trying to rotate our element in the anti clockwise direction okay if the shear stresses are acting on the element in such a way that their sense of rotation is anti clockwise then what you have to take you have to take the shear stress as positive i will repeat it because it's something uh, very important look here what is this tau trying to do what is this tau trying to do okay here this tau is trying to move the machine element you you imagine that it's fixed here now what's this tau trying to do it's trying to move the it's trying to rotate the machine element in which direction in the anti clockwise direction as it's trying to rotate the machine element in anti clockwise direction you take this tau as positive okay now look at this tau what is this tau trying to do fix the opposite side okay now this is tending to rotate in which direction in the clockwise direction take this now tau as negative 
तो शेयर स्ट्रॉस विच टेंड्स टू रोटेट द मशीन एलिमेंट इन क्लॉक वाइज डायरेक्शन टेक इट नेगेटिव शेयर स्ट्रॉस विच टेंड्स टू रोटेट द मशीन एलिमेंट इन एंटी क्लॉक वाइज डायरेक्शन टेक इट एज पॉजिटिव रेस्ट वी शेल बी डिस्कसिंग इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास थैंक यू